Hey, what's up, guys? So today's going to be an extra special day. Why? Because it's Tuesday, man. It's Taco fucking Tuesday. Of course it's going to be a special day. Now, it's, um, you know what? We're one day closer to moving. Um, again, we're excited. Uh, we have a lot of our stuff uh, listed uh, for sale. You know, we're, we're liquidating. Like, because here's the deal. Like, we have six months from when we live in our apartment to our house. So we have to pay to store it. We have to pay to move it twice. On some sec, on some ways, it's a, uh, it's kind of easier to just fucking get rid of it and get new. So you know what was fresh beginnings, fresh beginnings. But today, um, obviously, I'm not boxing. If you look, my, uh, uh, my tongue's healing. My wife's really mad at me for sparring. She doesn't think I should spar anymore. She thinks it's going to hurt. She's probably right. Last two weeks, I had this really bruised and swollen in my tongue. I've <laughs> Maybe I should find a new sport. Not have a new sport, it's bodybuilding. I just really enjoy boxing. And um, you know, I don't know. It's just, it makes me feel alive. Like being able to get in there and have fun and in a safe manner, do primitive man shit. Men are supposed to fucking be aggressive. Men are supposed to fight. Look, I've been in a fight, a street fight since I was fucking 16 years old, right? So, one reason is I get all that shit out. I have no pent up frustration or anger. If I wasn't playing football, I was lifting. If I wasn't lifting, I was boxing. You know what I mean? Like, throughout life, I found ways to channel my aggression and anger that is naturally occurring in males. We have testosterone. We have natural tendencies to go out and want to fucking protect and hunt. It's just what fucking men do. I know y'all skinny jean wearing soy boys don't have that primitive instinct, but I'm an old school fucking man. I'm a man's man, all right? Like, when shit needs done, I, t- I step up and I get it done. Men do men shit. We don't sit out, oh, I'm all about getting in my feelings. Well, I like getting my feelings too. That doesn't mean you can't feel me punch you in the face. You know, it's, it's, it's a primitive thing. And unfortunately, the society's been so fucking feminized that men don't do men shit. You know what men do? Men take care of their women. Men take care of their children. Men work. Yeah, we fucking work and we provide. And guess what? If your wife works or your girlfriend works, that's cool too. That's cool too. But at the end of the day, you motherfucker need to be providing. Call me chauvinistic, call me sexist, I don't give a fuck. That's what I feel. So, man, my wife fucking basically runs our companies, you know? So you don't see me like, oh, women can't, women can do anything men can do. Dude, I'm raising a strong young woman in Cami. And she's doing some epic shit. She's gonna run the country, and if a dude try to fight her, she'd probably beat his ass. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, that doesn't mean males don't have their role in society. That's just how I feel. You disagree with me, I respect that. But I think men need to do men's shit. I think most women, unless they're complacent, they've settled for a little bitch, they agree with me. So, oh, your muscles are so scary. Oh, your veins are so ugly. Bro, your dude hasn't seen his dick in four years. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, I digress. So today, the plan of action, get the kids off to school. I basically, I'm only reason on treadmill this morning is to get my body going, and also because I wanted to edit some shit and get an Instagram post up, might as well move while doing it. Um, after we get Preston off to school, he's the last one, we we'll go to the gym, it's chest day, I'm gonna go light, I donated blood yesterday. You know, just take it easy, I'm not gonna be my strongest, I know that. After that, work, 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 work. Cammy has practice at 8.15 to 9.30 tonight. So I'm gonna take that night shift and during that night shift, I'm gonna get squats. Katie has to take the boys to practice between 4.30 and 6.30. So she's gonna go ahead and take care of that and she gets some Costco done. So that's our day in a nutshell. Let's see what we have happening. My weight today, um, again, I guess posed. I, I, I sucked down to about, pleated a little bit, about 2.14. I was on stage at around 218 pounds Today I was 221.4 pounds, feeling really fucking good. Um, 
after donating blood, I was a little, uh, I didn't pop out of bed the way I usually do, like pop. I was a bit slower getting up. That could be because I'm old, or it could be because, well, by yesterday I did the sparring, donated blood, and I squatted. That was a lot. But I'm trying to get out, see Tracy before she leaves the hospital, I'm trying to get some time to do that. Then definitely before I move, um, when she's released and put into a different facility. So I'm working on it, working on it. But again, this, uh, this whole vlog is about bringing awareness to and helping fight, because we're never gonna stop it. We can only do our part. We can only do our part. We're not that big of a channel, man. And that's why I need your help. You need to fight and stop domestic abuse. And of course, help Tracy, you know? Help my girl out. She's gone through a lot. A lot more than you or I could even imagine. She's been through and she does it with a smile. And she's the most inspirational person you'll ever meet. So I want you all to think about that when you get up, spend time with your friends, your family, you're moving around, you're walking. Know that because of domestic violence, Tracy will never walk again. You know, she just went to bed one night shit happened, woke up, she lost her eye and she can't walk. I know that sounds harsh, but that's the brutal fucking reality of this situation and why we're taking it so fucking seriously. I just talked to Alex Kickle about that. By the way, Alex Kickle is the guy who's helping me. I'm an amazing coach. In my opinion, I'm the best there is, but not for me personally. While I'm gonna be doing a lot of my thought process for this prep, year and a half, Alex is gonna be there as my third eye. He's gonna be there guiding me along. He's gonna be making health recommendations, physique recommendations, diet recommendations, things I can't do to myself because I'm not objective with myself. I hold myself to such a high standard, I panic. And most of y'all coaches know, it is what it is. We're great coaches, but not with ourselves. So, Alex and I were talking and he's, he's such a good guy, man. He's such a good family man. He's so excited to be a part of this cause, and all of us are. Like, this is beyond getting on stage. This is beyond making my kids proud, although that makes me happy too. This is beyond doing something competitive. We're doing something to help change the world and to make one young, beautiful lady's life that much more livable and make her feel that much better because all these people care. So we're gonna have different things throughout this, reaching out, you know, we're gonna send a bunch of, you know, uh, get well cars, a bunch of, we were thinking about, we're going to just do a bunch of stuff, man. It's going to be a great time. So, got to get on my day, fellas. Boom! Hey, guys. What's going on? So, one of the most asked questions is, what's my training routine? I've been training a long time, right? Now, I do abide by certain principles, right? I like to get one heavy-ass lift. Now, I will vary that. Some days... I come into the gym, it might be after sparring, might be after just a tough day, and I just don't feel like I'm gonna be able to go all out. So on those days, I'll pre-exhaust, I'll do high reps, I'll do machines, like I don't generally take days off on those days. On those days, I push through. But most days, I like to start my workout with a heavy compound movement. Be it squats, be it rows, Something of that nature. I like to get in there when I'm fresh and I like to go hard. Now, before I do anything, on days when I know, you know, I can't go to the gym later or I can't do anything at home or I'm traveling, I'll warm up with my daily squats. Now, I won't take it as hard as if I did it separately, but I'll warm up with 135 by 5. 185 by 3, 225 by 2, 275 by 1, 315 by 1, 275 by 1, 225 by 2, 185 times 3, 135 times 5. That's my general up and down warm up. It gets me going, gets me ready to rock. Now, on days I do squat separately, I have more power for my actual lift. This is what I prefer to do. I prefer to do squats on their own. Now, I always like to do something to warm up. When I wake up every morning feeling like P. Diddy, I do my 20 to 30 minutes of walking. When it's nice outside, like when I moved to Brentwood, Tennessee year round, I walk outside. 
I like getting fresh air. I like getting the sounds of nature. I only like to have headphones in. I like to walk my dog. I like to just enjoy that alone time, right? And I answer a lot of my Instagram stories. If you're not subscribed to me on Instagram, it's at Mark Lobliner. And if I'm still talking funny, it's because I got my tongue bit myself when I was sparring yesterday. And this is the Ambrosia Planta shake I drink every day. Spinach, peanut butter cup, Ambrosia Planta, some whipped cream on top because I'm not a vegan, but I like vegan sources. By the way, I just did an article a day or I did a presentation on why brown rice and pea protein are very similar to animal proteins in their bioavailability. But I digress. So I always warm up with squats. Now, on days I don't do squats like today, I'm going to go in this workout. Now, this is my chest workout. What is my workout split? I get that a lot. It depends. Right now, I'm boxing two to three times a week. When I move to Tennessee, I'm going to be real. My boy Julian's place is far. It's like 40 minutes away. Right now, Pro Boxing Fitness, my fucking place. I love that place so much. Story for you here. It's a vlog, so I can talk a lot. I might not box. I'm going to actually put up boxing in my house. My house ain't going to be ready till June. I'm living in an apartment, man. I might not box ever again. I don't know. At least not three times a week. But I got in trouble because I told my wife I wasn't going to spar anymore. And I sparred. <laughs> and then she noticed I was talking funny and she made me show her, her my, my tongue. And uh, she was so mad at me for sparring. She threatened to tell my co call my coach Eric and tell on me. Well, he's the motherfucker who punched me in the face. Call his ass. Shit. Get that muchacho in trouble. Fuck him. <laughs> because of him, I want Trump to build a fucking wall. He keeps hitting me in my face. Of course, he's making me a racist. I digress again. So anyway, so on weeks I box, I usually go on Monday. Now, when I box on Monday, generally speaking, I'll just do squats later in the day. Like I did yesterday. Yesterday was a bit weird because I also donated blood. So let's just say that I slept really good that night. Donating blood is very taxing on your body. So if I box Monday, generally speaking, here's my split. I'll hit chest and sometimes biceps. Sometimes I'll give arms their own day or their own time slot. So what I did today is I did chest and biceps. Tomorrow I will do legs. Quad dominant, right? The next day I will do back. Okay, the next day I will probably do shoulder and arms or boxing. So let's say Thursday is my boxing day. So I go Tuesday, Wednesday, train, boxing. Friday, I'll come back and do shoulders and arms. Saturday, I'll do a hamstring dominant leg day. Sunday, I'll start over with chest. Now those vary depending on my boxing days. Now boxing's gone. I'd still like to find two days a week to do something not bodybuilding, but I want to go fucking hard. On my off days, I want to go on a fucking five-hour fucking trail bike ride. I want to go on a three-hour hike. I want to fucking do epic shit because I fucking love it. I love this shit. I fucking love it. I love boxing. I love training. I love hiking. I love bicycle riding. I love playing with my kids. I love all that shit. Shit, on those other days, I might take my kids out to the field. I do a bunch of field sprints, a bunch of drills, bring jump ropes out there, bring some kettlebells, bring some fucking tires, some medicine balls. I love that shit. That is the shit I fucking love. So let's go into what today. So today was chest day. Now, don't get too excited. I actually have a chest guide, a book coming out. And I'm going to have to charge for it because it took a lot of time and a lot of resources to film this and everything, right? However, it's going to be available at a very, very, very affordable price. Keep an eye open for it. And the site should be up very soon. I might even put a teaser in this. However, this is something I've been working on on the side. I think you guys are going to really, really, really enjoy it. Really fucking enjoy it. But a lot of this training will be similar to that, but not the same. Because this is for me. And like I said, I've been training for years. And I know my body. But what I made is great for everybody looking to make them gains. It also has variations if you can't do certain movements. But let's go into what I did today. And I got video to back it up. My first exercise is a warm-up. 
Since I'm doing squats later tonight at basement gym while my daughter is at practice for soccer, I did reverse hypers, right? I love these because they really warm up my entire back. And by holding onto the handles, it's actually engaging my upper body a little bit. And I find that when my upper, when my lower back and my core are warmed up, my body follows. And it gets me going. My back feels good. I just feel right. My mindset is on point because I am fucking <laughs> regaining, well, actually earning my first IFBB, but I was a Navi Pro. I'm going to win that fucking pro card in 2021. Fuck this. I was talking to my man Alex Kickle today, the guy helping me with my diet, helping me with my you know, um, health parameters, so to speak. Man, we are going to fucking dominate this shit. I'm so fucking excited. If I lose this fucking show, it's not because I didn't bring the most conditioned, disgusting, muscular package you've seen. It's because my genetics are fucking terrible. <laughs> it's because my insertions are weird and I have a weird shape. But I think my shape's good enough to really fucking bring it. Because I'm going to bring such fucking nastiness to the stage, you're going to fucking vomit when you see it. That's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for a fucking shock and fucking awe fucking uh, package. So I start out. With those hyper extensions, right? With those fucking reverse hypers. My wife does hyper extensions because those, she has fake boobs and they fucking make her like out of breath to hold on. Like her titties get all up in her face. I like her titties a lot. I enjoy those titties. Second exercise is going to be dumbbell bench press. Now, my goal is usually to take a weight and do it until I could get 15 reps. Progressive overload. Today, I did not manage to go up in weight or reps because donating blood yesterday as well as sparring, I'm lucky I got what I got last week. However, my progression on the flat dumbbell press, 50 pounds for six, 75 for six, 100 for five, 120 for three, 140 for three, and then my all out sets was set See, with my tongue, I can't even, man, this is some cunnilingus shit right here. With my max out set, this is why my wife doesn't want me to fucking box, 160 for six. After that, I was pumped, ready to fucking rock. Then we did my favorite, cable flies. You put the bench between the fucking cables, if you have a pec deck, and you fucking, not a pec deck, you got a fucking uh, a cable station, crossover station, and then you do flies. Now, the good thing about doing these flies is that you don't have to worry about tension. You always have tension on the muscle, 100% of the time. There is no point at the top when you're not fucking holding weight. With dumbbells, you got this part right here. If you come up all the way, well, you ain't doing shit. You're just basically, yeah, your chest is just weak. Nah, fuck that. I love this shit. Next, I did high rep. 20 rep sets for five total sets on the incline press. Now, the number of sets I did on the flies, we did six. I'm really going high volume. Why? Because I'm fucking ready. Like, I am so in a training zone right now. Six sets of kill. I'm not saying you do this volume. Like, remember, this is professional shit. Then we did, of course, that. We did the machine. And then we're like, holy shit, we are kind of fucking tired. And unless I'm missing something, I'm pretty sure... The next thing we did, because we were pretty damn exhausted, I'm thinking back, we did that, we looked around, I'm like, yeah, we're pretty much spent here. Yep, and we went and we did close grip, neutral grip presses out like this. Boom. Now that felt absolutely amazing. It just kind of brought everything together. And I'm still thinking if we forgot anything, because we went there, you guys ever do a workout and you don't fucking remember what the fuck you did? I was so in the zone today that I just don't know what the fuck I did, but I'm pretty sure that was it. Um, yep, pretty sure that was it. And if it wasn't, then I'm going to leave the other exercise out so you don't think I'm stupid. Now, if it was, then I'll go ahead and add that shit at the end of this. So, after that, we were done. Now, the reason I do that is, for one... You're getting the progressive overload on the main workout. You're getting the progressive overload, the really hard-hitting, fast-twitch shit. Second thing with flies, you're getting complete constant tension, different movement, different angle. Some will argue you don't need flies. I disagree. 
and sort of. You don't need them, but when you're going for a certain level of muscularity and targeting your muscles and exhausting all fibers, I do believe they help tremendously. The machine, you're hitting more of your slow twitch fibers. You're going towards anaerobic, not, not as much anaerobic, but aerobic. And you're really bringing everything in. And you've already done lower rep sets. Like the flies were only between 8 and 12 reps. Now we're bringing in a whole nother rep range. The last thing we did, the neutral grip press, which we did for about four sets of 8 to 12 reps. That's just for fucking mercy, man. That's just to tell our muscles, fuck you. We're going to make you work a little bit more. And also, when you're doing this, you have constant tension. If you focus on squeezing the pec, and honestly, I just really like doing it. It's a good fatiguing movement. You could do a dumbbells. You could do it at home. Do it at your home gym. Don't have to go too heavy. I only went up to 50 pounds. And that's the workout. What I want to do is days like today, when I don't have much to talk about from a life standpoint, because I'll tell you a little bit of what went on today. I like to use this opportunity to go over my workouts because I think that's why a lot of you guys are watching this. And if you're really interested in how I train, I'm coming out with a complete series. Um, I've never charged for programs before, but this one is so out there and it's so affordable and it's so much better than the other stuff out there. The little stupid eBooks that are ghost written by your favorite professional bodybuilders. Fuck that. That's a rip off. I'm not ripping you off, bro. So check it out. Today, exciting announcements. A lot of y'all might see, not see this. We are 100% ready to ship our order to Europa Sports, the largest sport nutrition distributor. Now, we were exclusive for a year with Muscle Foods, and they're still amazing. We're still with them. But with our growth, we just needed more feet on the ground, man. We needed more boots on the ground. We needed more reach. And that's where Europa came in. I've known Europa since 1999 when I had dinner with Jeff Compton and Eric Hillman when I was at Weeder Publications. Um, what was really funny is Eric Hillman got the liver and onions at Longhorn Steakhouse, and I always thought, who the fuck eats liver and onions? Good news is, for those of you who've been watching me for a while, guess who I get to work with every day on this? This is one of the reasons I did it. Rob Moran. The guy who was VP at Salvation. Rob the Reason Moran. For those of you who don't remember Rob Moran, <laughs> Rob's the dude. It was myself, Rob Moran, and Derek Charleboy were Salvation. Together, we built that company to eight plus figures. And I love those guys like I do my kids, like my brother. Rob is, I brought him into the company. I was actually, I signed. If you go to Rob's house, you will see my signature on his wall. I signed his ketubah at his wedding. That's a Jewish wedding contract. I believe rule number eight is you must get a blowjob at least twice a week. I made sure that the rabbi wrote that in there. And hopefully Rob's still enjoying that idea. So that's another one. Another thing is, well, in the next couple weeks, we are shipping our complete order to Vitamin Shop. All 780 plus Vitamin Shop locations, we will be their number one displayed bar in their stores. And guess what else shipped today? hy V. We are going to be in every single High V supermarket in the Midwest, all of their stores. Very excited about that. And you can expect to see me at your local High V because I'm doing a tour. You're fucking right I am. <sighs> so let's get down to what really matters. Why are we here? Tracy, right? In addition, well, that, that came about after I decided to do this, right? Like I was already going to go for the pro card. But I want you guys to look at the link down below and look at Tracy's page, right? Tracy texted me the other day, gleefully, that she popped a wheelie on her wheelchair, right? Um, today, I actually, it was Taco Tuesday. I tried to get tacos delivered to her room and security would not let Uber Eats up. So the Uber Eats driver had a free lunch. <laughs> I seriously was gonna surprise her with tacos. But sometimes things don't work out. Um, you guys might be thinking, and I've been asked this by a couple people, including people close to me. Why am I so obsessed with Tracy? Good question. You know, I have everything going on, right? I have my jobs. I have the fastest growing bar in the world right now. 
By the way, the shipment to Australia from Australian people, it's on its way. It's on the water right now. New Zealand, their second order is going out. Mexico, GNC Mexico is on board. Canada, all the Popeyes location, Herx. MTS, Tiger Fitness, we had our biggest Black Friday ever. We beat all Black Friday through Cyber Monday and Tuesday by the mid-Saturday of Black Friday weekend. We grew 60% Black Friday to Black Friday. My wife is amazing. I'm deeply in love with her. Madly, deeply, insanely in love. I just went through all our mementos from when we were in high school. I read through love letters. And God, I love that woman so fucking much. My kids, what can I say? They're outstanding students, athletes. They're everything. They're my role models. Like, I should be their role model. My kids are my role models. When you give to a charity, you're kind of assuming it goes towards the cause you want it to go to, right? You're just like, oh, I'm going to give this shit to Wounded Warrior and we're going to be all good. Turns out the CEO is getting paid 560 grand a year to do nothing. Like the guy was a jerk. He was ripping people off. Um, all right. So that's that. Whatever. How do I say this? Tracy and me were friends. Like, I'm not saying we were bros. We we're spending time on weekends. She came to a few things. You know, she when I had my American Grip party, she was there. She met all my friends, Dr. Stu. We met at the Arnold. Like, again, like, I consider Tracy like my sister. D don't get it twisted one bit. But... Very rarely in life do you meet somebody who just makes you smile because they're kind spirit and they're good heart and they're just passion for life. And I want to, I want to kind of delve into this because I, I know this might seem weird and I'm cool with that because when I went in for veterans, right, for the whole thing and we did the Real Way to Real Heroes raised you know, probably six plus figures, definitely $70,000 at the one event alone. Uh, people were wondering, well, you didn't serve, what's your thing? I'm like, well, my mom served in Israel and I really love my fucking country and these guys are losing limbs to keep us free and safe. When we donated 30,000 plus dollars to muscular dystrophy and 30,000 plus dollars to cystic fibrosis, my daughter's friend has cystic fibrosis. I got to see what she was going through, right? all the therapy and the, 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 the treatments and, and the lungs and, and all that was, man, her parents stressing, you know, Don and JP stressing every day over that. And then I saw Stu and his kid and, and his kid, you know, not be able to walk anymore, right? So I'd give to these foundations, you know, and these people, you know, they were able to provide like Don and JP, they were getting their stuff and they were able to provide. You know, they had insurance, they worked their ass off and they were good parents good parents, right? Dr. Stu does well and he has, and he's able to take care of his kid as much as he can. We're giving to a charity. Dude, Tracy's a full grown 24 year old woman who just a month ago went from being a girl who liked to exercise and be happy and going through something mentally that we that we have trouble even imagining and going through that mentally and physically having to be reminded of that every single time she can't feel her legs. She can't see out of her left eye. I, I seriously just, I, I want to just hug her. I have a daughter. Like Jesus Christ guys, like, this can happen to any of our kids. Domestic violence and abuse is out of control. So we're going to do a lot of things in this vlog. We're going to do a lot of things up to this show and even afterwards. Look, my, my focus now, aside from my day-to-day -day family, business, friends, is domestic violence and abuse. And Tracy, you know how much it's going to cost her to live? 
You know how much that's going to cost for therapy for the next year or two or beyond? She didn't deserve this, dude. I know there's a lot, but this isn't my path. This is my world. Like, yeah, she wasn't my fucking neighbor. She didn't live with me. It wasn't my wife. Might as well have been, right? It's someone I cared about. You know? I've never felt so much empathy. I've never felt so much sympathy. I've never felt so much towards someone who I'm not related to. Aside from, you know, but I've never, my family's never gone through this. I've never known anybody. And here's what got me after I visited. This is when I decided to dedicate this to her, to bring money and awareness. I don't want you fucking donating to me. Donate to that link below. Donate to that GoFundMe. Like, I visit Tracy and she's smiling. She's telling jokes to the rehabilitative specialist during therapy and she's working her ass off trying to figure out how to use this fucking wheelchair. And then I'm sitting there and she's going through respiratory therapy and she nearly passes out because she's working so hard. And everybody sits here and we complain about Starbucks fucking up our order and we complain about, oh, I can't lose this little bit of fat on my lower abs. Oh, <laughs> really? Really? We're working every day to better ourselves. She's working every day to walk. And unless some breakthrough comes through with stem cells, man, he severed her C5, C6. So there's certain things I can do. What I can't do is I can't go find this guy and beat his ass till he dies. And what will that do anyway? It's not going to bring her ability to walk back. It's not going to bring her left eye back, right? All I can do is raise awareness and be there for her, right? And if this happened to someone you even knew, I hope you'd have the same reaction. Look, I've been asked. I have. Why? Why are you so obsessed with this? Because there's a phenomenon, guys. Derek Carver told me about this. After the romanticization or after the tragedy, people forget. You know, what people used to come see you every day, see you once a week, then once a month, then once a year. Life goes on. And I, I'm not going to say I'm going to be contacting her every day for the rest of her life. As far as I'm concerned, that's my sister right there, man. That's my family. So I couldn't be there during the attack. But I could definitely be there now. And if that doesn't drive me to be the best me ever, I just had this talk to my wife today. I'm driven to be the best father, the best business person, you have no idea. And that's what I hope. I hope that one day we get her to the point where she can go and she can talk about perseverance. Go speak at universities, at elementary schools. People need to hear her story. And I'm here to help her tell that story. If she tells me to back off and shut the fuck up, I will. But right now, right now, all I want to do is help. Anyway, guys. Call it a day. See you guys tomorrow. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Look who I ran into in LA. Good to meet you. I've been watching your videos a long time. Tell me about this protein bar. So it's the Outright Bar, man. It's all natural ingredients made with real food. None of that. You ever, you ever want to work out? You want just a little snack, a little bar before training, but you know the other bars might give you a gut bomb. Right. This is something that doesn't have any prebiotic fiber, no glycerin, no sugar alcohols. It's whole real food. That is a tasty bar. Really? It's easy to eat. It's not too chewy. You normally eat something like this with a big ass glass of milk. That's good. <laughs> so it's like a cookie. It's not really good. good. If you want, we also have the, want to try the almond butter one while we're here? I'd love to. All right, so this is, bar. this is made with almond butter, Steve. That's a butter too. Really? It's badass. Yeah. Good protein bars, working people find these. Well, they can find it at many retail stores. You can find it at tigerfitness.com. Two badass protein bars. So they get uh, two double uh, metal fingers up <laughs> from Stone Cold Steve Austin, and that's the bottom line.